Hey there, today you're going to explore the five greatest coin sacrifices of all time. And there we go, the game number one between Reti against Tartakover, two of the really strong players of the past. We're seeing here the Karakan defense, white goes knight to c3, pawn takes, and then black goes knight to f6. One of the options for black here is, is really to, to play this move knight to f6, which often leads to an exchange in a fairly simplistic game afterwards. Very often black can achieve a, an easy draw here, but back into the game white played another move instead. Instead of trading the knights, he played queen to d3 to protect his knight. And black probably decided that queen d3 is a bit weird move, as normally you don't develop your queen too early, and they decided to strike back in the center by playing pawn to e5. That is not really a pawn sacrifice, as they're gonna get it back on the next move with the help of this little tactical trick. Queen a5 with a double attack to the white's king and the pawn. White played bishop d2 and black grabbed the pawn here on e5. And black probably thought that they achieved a really great position, as currently due to the pin the white's knight cannot escape. And black is attacking it two times with their queen and the knight. And it looks like white is kinda in trouble. In addition to that, the queen is also taking aim at, the, at that weak pawn on b2. But all of a sudden, white just castled queenside. Black probably decided that white did that out of desperation, and they grabbed the knight with their own knight. Just to mention that queen takes e4 does not work for black because of rook to e1, installing this pin along the e-file and then winning the queen on the next move. But black saw it, and so coming back to the game, black took this knight with their own knight, probably thinking that they are actually winning the game and white should resign. Instead, however, white sacrificed one more piece, this time a queen, queen d8, which makes it one of the greatest games of all time, because after that, white prepared a really strong discovered check bishop g5. Because the check is delivered with the rook from d1 as well, not only the bishop from g5, the black skin has to move. What can it do? If, if it goes to e8, then simply rook d8, checkmate. And now let's take a move back. And if the king goes to c7, as it did in the game, white plays bishop d8, delivering this super beautiful checkmate with a bishop from d8 in the middle of the board. That is just astonishing. The next game was played between Henry Thomas Buckle playing white against an unknown opponent. Here we can see the Sicilian defense, black goes d6, white plays knight to c3, pawn to e5. That's one of the ways for black to close the center and get supposedly a really well protected position. White plays bishop c4, knight to c6. So far everything's more or less standard. Both players are just developing their pieces. Here black played knight to e7, which is already inaccurate. In fact, white could have played knight to g5, which he didn't in the actual game, but white could have played knight g5. And with a double attack to this f7 pawn, black is already somewhat in trouble. Anyway, that didn't happen in the game. White played bishop to g5, which is also a normal move. Blade played symmetrically bishop g4, knight e5, trying to put more pressure, knight e4. Black is still responding symmetrically. And all of a sudden, instead of just trading some pieces, white played a very sudden move, knight takes e5, sacrificing their queen. And after the queen was captured, bishop to d1, there goes knight to f6, sacrificing one more piece so that we can get to the black skin in this line and the game is over. The next game was played back in 1620 by Greco, who was one of the strongest players of that time against an unknown opponent who plays b6, I think it's called an Owens defense or something like that. d4, bishop b7, bishop d3, and black plays pawn to f5, which is actually something a lot of black players still do up to this very date, because the black's idea here is that they can see that their bishop is potentially taking aim at the white's pawn on, on the g2 and then hopefully can also grab the rook on h1. And with that being said, the pawn f5, this undermine, looks very strong. Now it's not that easy for white to protect the pawn, but white can actually take the pawn and allow black to grab this pawn on g2. And if black is happy with their achievement, thinking that they're going to win the rook on the next move, then he play queen h5. And by the way, it's really worthwhile to remember this line because just like I said, a lot of players still get into this trap up to this date. They play pawn to g6 now because there is no other way they can cover their king. Now you take the pawn. Now what can black do? Well, they see that you're gonna attack them with a queen right here, right? So they play knight to f6, trying to move your queen away from here so that after that they can happily grab the rook on h1. But if anyone plays this against you, then of course, first of all, you can do this. <laughs> and that instead of retreating with your queen, you actually sacrifice it by playing pawn takes h7, 
and after black captures the queen you go bishop g6 really beautiful smother checkmate with developed just just one bishop it's, it's quite funny that white has actually just one piece into the game which is a bishop and he delivers a checkmate now let's have something for black as well In this game black played the other hand's defense white played knight to c3 pawn to d5 this position could arise from the Scandinavian defense as well. And after white took the pawn instead of recapturing, black decided to play in a gambit style but by playing pawn to c6. A fairly interesting way to gain more activity, to get advantage in development and trying to develop an attack afterwards. Here white played pawn to d3, pawn to e5, bishop g5, the move that most of the amateur players love to play so much, putting this pin on your knight. However, black just ignored it and developed their bishop to an active square, bishop c5, and here white played knight to e4, trying to take advantage of this pin, but also to attack the, white, the black's bishop as well as the knight, and probably white thought that black would move their bishop backward, which would allow white to trade a lot of the minor pieces here in f6, and because they're a pawn up actually here it's good for them to trade pieces but in the game instead of retreating with the bishop black just sacrificed the queen easy to guess for you because you know that this video is about queen sacrifices but anyway it's a pretty cool tactical shot here and after bishop takes bishop takes f2 and after that knight to d4 beautiful checkmate with two knights it's quite a common tactical pattern known as a legal checkmate usually white de delivers it but in this case black found the way to deliver it as well and the final game is between Alehain, uh, one of the world champs, against Vasic. Here we can see the French defense. Black plays bishop b4 and bishop d3. Not the main line, but still playable. White protects the pawn on e4, therefore it makes sense. Here black decided to trade their bishop for a knight, which is actually a mistake, even though the classical chess books told you that a bishop is equal three pawns, such as a knight, and therefore it's an equal exchange, but in reality bishop is a bit stronger, so black should avoid making trades like this. Here black played pawn to h6, not really sure about the reason, perhaps black was worrying about the white smooth bishop g5 after black develops their knight to f6, but anyway h4, h6 move neglects development and black should have just developed their pieces instead. White plays bishop a3, white takes advantage of the black's inaccuracies and putting the bishop right here possibly cuts off the black skin from the eventual castling in the future, therefore white already starts creating some problems for black. Black goes 97, queen e2. Potentially here white is ready to take on d5 and take advantage of the pin along the e-file, which this queen delivers. So black decided to take on e4 by himself, and then he goes knight to f6. Here white was smart and didn't let black to trade their bishop, so he plays bishop d3. Black goes pawn to b6, trying to fiancato their bishop here on b7, and in fact the black's position would be pretty good, but there is just one problem here, which is queen takes e6, and after that, bishop g6 checkmate. Another beautiful checkmating construction delivered with two bishops from different sides of the board. So they have the perfect harmony here in delivering this beautiful checkmate. And to wrap this up, I've got a short quiz for you. It is black to move, and your task is to find the right move for black here and to write it down in the comments below. This is the, the position from the game between Wesley Saul playing white against Magnus Carlsen playing black. Once again, it is black to move, and the position is really intense. Both players are attacking each other. Currently, white is attacking the black's rook and a bishop, so black really needs to do something about that. And of course, you shouldn't just guess the move, but really define the entire line, the entire continuation. If you want to know what's the solution, I actually have a dedicated video with Queen Sacrifices, most beautiful games played by Magnus Carlsen. And you can click the link below the video and check this out, and there you can see this game analyzed just as well. Because I understand that some of you guys may feel like this guy who wrote in comments, I make great Queen Sacrifices too, great for my opponent, he always wins. So <laughs> to avoid these kind of situations, you can just master this skill yourself. And finally, of course, let me also invite you to join my free masterclass, the best way to improve a chess quickly by clicking the link on the screen or down below in the video, wishing you great chess victories.